And this is the one that Bird wants. The red one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you can have that one. Yay! I'll take, um, I think the other blue. Vicky? She's adorable. Yay. She's so good. And you are player one tonight, so you kick off everything. Yay! All right, there you, you get go. to pick three pick items. items. We've got Competitive Tarot, Dragon Heat, the Romance Novel, Iron Maiden Sleeping Bag, the Magic Mirror, Sock Puppet, the Sword of Roar, King of the Lions, the Smallest Violin, Canned Brain, and the Book <laughs> of Orgy Etiquette. <laughs> All right. Um, three things? Yep. Right? They affect yep. your stats. Okay. I will take the teeny little violin. Um, and uh, the sword. So and old. orgy etiquette. No comment. Double smarts. Ryan or Skater? It's a tough choice. Plays the new guy. Okay. A little sad that you're not going with the squid. The <laughs> squiddle. <laughs> tiny squid. It is cute. Who yeah. was, was Colonel the squid last time? I'm in. I don't remember. We just were just marveling <laughs> at his voice. <laughs> Campfire songbook. Oh no. Philosopher's Stone growing kit. Uranium lipstick. Uh oh. Oh, Scott that's snacks. dangerous. Magic Yay. mirror. Shades on fire. <laughs> Ow. Blade blade. Chest two. <laughs> and sketch chest two. Oh, look at the look at the fucking look at the Jack Demon in the sketchbook. I don't see him. Oh, wow, that is hot. Yeah. That is a lot of abs. Blade blade. Yep. Where's the outline? There's the outline. It's harder to tell what you're selecting when there's only two options in any game. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly you're like, wait a minute, which one's the one? That it's either... No, 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 no. No. <laughs> My brain. <laughs> My brain just quit on me. I'll try to that would have been incredibly confusing. <laughs> that would have been really funny and I would have hated you. Build your own goal. McGriffin EP. Damn. Smoky campfire stories. Business anal paste. Ah. Oh, marshmallows. <laughs> I get it. Tardigrade plushie. Multi tool. BFF bracelet kit. And lemonade Daki Makura. I would have a tardigrade plushie if I was someone who would get plushies. You're not a person who gets plushies? I kind of no. took you for one. Oh. No, okay, I, only have, I only have. I have a few statues. Oh, okay. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the MC Griffin EP. The uh, plushies stress me out as a thing that you have to like, that, that can get dirty. <laughs> oh yeah, stay. you have to wash them yeah, every once in a year. It's like, a, be fine. It's like, it's like a It's like a figure you can stain. <laughs> what stats popped up for that? It was uh, fun and I don't know, I didn't, I literally charming, I think. <laughs> oh, good, me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with the multi-tool. It's too much. Oh no, a one-off pencil that can just that just be over with. You just run out. There's a lot of other things that are worrisome there. I uh, and... needles are reusable. Uh huh. We'll go with the uh the body pillow. Lemonade cool. sun. That looks good. Could you become lemonade coon? <laughs> Love we're always beginners. Get to the pole. There we go. Blah. The bus trip was long, and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. And so it was clear. It all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Which of these would be your favorite food? Burning hot wings, a wine to die for, at the nicest guac. A yummy USB. <laughs> Punch to the face. Whoever gives you the best stats. <laughs> Whatever gives you the best stats. Um, the nicest guac. You guac. would pick that. Of course I would. Who even is guac? Um, I have no idea who is who, guac. 
Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Also, Damien and what's her name are really hard to separate mentally. I know. It's Damien can be burning hot wings and Dahlia would be a punch to the face, but I have no idea. Yeah. These are, uh, one of these is Joy and the other one is Milo. I know. This one's avocado, so it's probably Milo. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I'll go for Calculester. Okay, sounds good. Uh, best stats. Again? <laughs> Every of week. course! Who, uh, <laughs> excuse me for going for the best girl. <laughs> oh, hey. I was wrong. Okay, who voices whomst? Well, there are three women. Oh my god, finally. <laughs> <laughs> there is a Somebody 50 else could... There is a 50-50 yeah. gender split. Okay. Uh, I think Joy is usually done by Colonel, so you're up for Joy. Okay. Oh, yay! I love guac! It's a great vegan snack. Do you make your own or get it store-bought? I have a great homemade guac recipe that I use from time to time. It also doubles as a congealed potion of sexual pleasure if that's something you're interested in. No, pass. Maybe I'll let you try a bit of it while we're at camp, Ladybird. Alkylister is usually also Colonel. Maybe, yeah. Um, yeah. Like robot voice. I, did you want to do that one as well? Or? Uh, maybe. I think I'm probably going to end up doing Dahlia um, instead of, I don't know. Yeah, why don't you do Calculister as well? Okay. Ah, how nice. I also love a refreshing USB in the morning. <laughs> the flavor of new data flowing over my processors and into my digestive hard drive is indescribable. But I'm sure you all know about that, Keith, even if you do not have a USB port. Although I am not an expert in your species, do you have a USB port? Is that a personal question? <laughs> Could I see it when we get to camp? Purely for scientific reasons, of course. Bonk, bonk. Well, I'm off to a strong start. <laughs> Whoa, same here, bird. I like your style. Oh, snacks a lot here will eat anything and everything that even looks like a bagel. But I only have to eat, but I only eat to fuel my body. Are you talking about me? What's wrong with enjoying a couple of empty carbs every 10 minutes? The only stat I care about is raising my bagel craving stat. See what I put up with. At least you understand me, bird. I bet camp's gonna be a lot more fun with you around. God, she's so crazy. So good. I love her. We only had two weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Wow, they've never said that line before. They every used to say it every game. Fucking they say time. It, they say it before and after every game now. Yeah. <laughs> You've got Joy. I have no idea what stat she wants. Have fun. Oh boy. Um, so the five stats are smarts, boldness, creativity, charm, and fun. I feel like she might like creativity. Um, which location would that be? That's Scout HQ, where you do crafts. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> it's Dragon Heat, or Dragon... I forgot, I already forgot the name of the book. <laughs> Dragon Heat. That day in Monster Scouts, you all learn to identify different animal tracks. First, you practice identifying bears and deer, and then you start having to identify way more specific tracks. You identify the tracks as a sculpt walk. Sculpt... <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Wow, sculptar. a sculptar? Half human, half sculptor. <laughs> Wait, that's not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> That, what? That's just a human who <laughs> happens to be a sculptor professionally. <laughs> you follow the tracks until you find the legendary beast. The sculptor reaches, that teaches you the basics of sculpture. You gain two creativity. I never want to try to pronounce that ever again. Oh my god, everyone. 
Oh no! <laughs> Everyone immediately. How, look, three bird characters. Have fun. <laughs> Which ones? Because two of them are one character. <laughs> oh. You duck into another of Coach's safety lectures so you can sit behind your friends and smell the hair. Uh. <laughs> Hello, my beloved scouts. But good is everybody. Suppose you're trapped in the woods during a forest fire. How do you survive? Level up, loser. <laughs> Easy. I switched to one of the 11 fire-resistant armor sets I carry with me at all times. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Why survive when you can thrive? I'd invite some friends and organize a fire tasting. Uh, I'd run out of the woods, like, away from the fire. Howard. You're not getting a badge for this. <laughs> You're not getting Damn. a badge for this. <laughs> nice to die, Joy, but Fighter's vision is based on movement. You'll lead it right to you. <laughs> what? Fire can't see. Not as long as you stand perfectly still. Oh, oh my god, that's the worst advice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to complain, coach. But none of these survival scenarios seem particularly relevant to me. An ancient curse that can't die. Got any better ones? <laughs> Don't worry, Hex. I've got one that's sure to be relevant to all of you. <laughs> okay, let's say, hypothetically, that it's the year 3000 and Chuck E. Cheese Entertainment has supplanted all the world's governments. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm listening. That's some advanced FNAF, no, FNAF lord. But <laughs> <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese himself has not been seen in person for years. He communicates with the populace through ever-present screens and watches them with... <laughs> 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 it's just... It is fine, it's funny! It's, it's big FNAFy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And watches them with the camera's eyes of a million animatronic servants. Pizza has become the world's dominant religion, and children are forced to work in the fun mines, harvesting tickets from rigged, rigged arcade machines to trade for food and shelter. Uh. You're being tracked by Munch's make-believe band, an arm of the Chuck E. Cheese... <laughs> <laughs> the CCSP. <laughs> the CCSP. The ch an arm of the Chuck E. Cheesy and so secret police. Because today is your birthday, <laughs> and they want to sing to you. Why is singing quotation marks? That's terrifying. <laughs> what do you do? Not happening. This is somehow even dumber than the fire thing. I'm leaving. That's not a very scout thing Really, Joy? You're going to leave all of those hypothetical people to die? <laughs> Come on, Joy. Say yes to hypothetical life. It will amuse me. <laughs> Joy is conflicted. Milo's in it for the lulls, and Aravi's in it for the XP. But none of them have any idea how to solve this, so it's up to you to suggest a solution. Unity is strength. Pool everyone's tickets together to buy the revolutionary giraffe plush. If the world is one big fast food restaurant, there's only one solution. Release the Karen. What? Oh, I thought it said Kraken, and yeah. I was like, that's, that's not scary, a, but now I'm scared. Joke. <laughs> and once it again, these are based on your stats. So you're trying to guess. Uh, you're trying to guess which one is your best stat. Because this game's a nightmare, and we're still not good at it's it. It's awful. <laughs> I read about this. I'll, I'll complain about it that uh, post game. <laughs> but I read about why the stats in this game in particular are super weird. Okay. Um. I'm leaning towards releasing the Karen. Is that a yes? Yes. So bold. Yay. You would release the Karen against me? You're mad. You're all mad. <laughs> Ladybird, don't do this. No force in the world can control a Karen. Her white privilege is too strong. What good is defeating the Chuck E. Cheesian Empire if in the process we become the very thing <laughs> <laughs> We are totally winning our lane. Don't listen to these nerds. Trafficking with occult powers to help me kill stuff is basically all I do. Oh, 
You're not going to kill the Chuck Cheesian Empire, you tell her. You're going to ask to speak to its manager. <gasps> It's like being disappointed in someone. <laughs> you describe the necessary rituals. The sprinkling of essential oils, the offering of Botox injections, oh. and compliments. <laughs> Botox injections and oh compliments. Oh my god. The sacrifice of a live millennial. Okay, the religion, the religion, the ritual is <laughs> complete. Roll to summon Karen. Wait, why are we rolling D&D &D dice now? You whip out your survival dice and roll a natural 20. <laughs> Coach opens his nice. survival handbook and finds the appropriate page. Karen is summoned. She deals 12d6 morale damage to everyone un unlucky enough to interact with her. She is immune to frost, lightning, and reasonable debate. Aww. She tells Chuck E. Cheese that his pizza is cold and she shouldn't have to pay for it. Critical hit! Chuck realizes that he all he ever wanted was to bring joy to children. This animatronic pizza dystopia was just an unfortunate side effect. As Charles Entertainment Cheese walks away from the burning ruins of his former empire. <laughs> <laughs> There's never been a voice less compatible with laughing. <laughs> he realizes that today is his birthday. The birthday of a new world. You've what? The That's stupid. <laughs> the end you survived and to celebrate i got you old cold greasy pizza oh <laughs> turn into fahrenheit by the end did somebody say pizza my favorite kind does it come in bagel you're killing me <laughs> hey ladybird it was pretty hot how you role played summoning a dark entity you could barely control nice work he's got a scout badge cloak <laughs> it looks so <laughs> what good. A, what a move. I underestimated you. The situation was too stupid for me to even comprehend. Which is why I'm grateful we had a true idiot like you on our side, Ladybird. Oh, Guess that was nice of her to here. say. <laughs> Fuck the pizza. Where's my XP? Where's my XP? You write a zillion XP on the pizza receipt and give it to Arabi. Everyone's happy. You gain two smarts and one fun. Let's go with the fun. <laughs> Yay! I like how in control of her emotions yeah. Robbie is at all times. Yeah, she's so chill. Yep, she's extremely chill and definitely not actively planning the death of everyone in the room. Chill is exactly That's the word that comes to my mind every time. Uh, I should probably. Oh, great! My worst stat. Uh, oh, you're cool. fucked. <laughs> uh, Calculester, I'm really impressive. Please think I'm smart. <laughs> You hike deep into the woods and find a mysterious journal with the number three on it, bur half buried in the, in the dirt. This is how a Jim Carrey movie started. Inside is tons of information on local monsters and how to defeat them. It covers gnomes, psychics, time travelers, Illuminati-shaped demons. What? What? <laughs> what a boring journal. Where's the drama? Where's the inner thoughts and insecurities about school crushes? Whoever wrote this journal knew nothing about how journals work. You gain no fun from this, but you surely get two smarts. <sighs> Boring. Oh my You're god. You're hiking through the woods with your friends. You inevitably get lost again. Honestly, why do you even keep leaving camp? How are you not dead yet? We're fucking lost! Alright, I guess I'll take Damien. Or, Keith, do you want to take any of Colonel's voices or not? Uh, Probably not. I should take him. I'd have, to come you up already voice have that, voices. I'd have to come up with a voice that isn't gravel <laughs> because okay, I can't I'll do, do every voice that's gravel immediately kills me in one sentence. Okay, okay, I'll do Damien. Fuck, guys, this is it. We're gonna die out here in the boring ass wilderness where there aren't even any wild filet mignons to eat. <laughs> he just needs a little more math and he'll figure it out. Adventure awaits. We'll just get there. Bye. Calm down, idiot. I can find food easily. I can't promise you filet mignon, but if we find an animal or slime and beat the shit out of it, it might drop a whole roasted chicken. I just want to marvel at the fucking color choice of that Hawaiian shirt. It's Which so Oh, good. wow. It's, it's so good. Mm -hmm. We don't have that kind of time. The only solution is cutting off our arms and eating them. What? That's a terrible idea. I need both my arms for punching things. What? You think I don't? It's a sacrifice we all have to make. If you just cut off your non-dominant arm, it won't be as bad. 
friend Damien, though I have no need for calories or dismemberment, I will also cut off my arm in solidarity. What a noob. See? Calculus is not scared. So why are you, Slayer? You aren't finding roasted chickens. You are a roasted chicken. Good. Good. Fuck you. I'm not scared. Hex, cut off your arm with me. No thanks. I don't have arms, just hands. I think I'll just eat this bagel. You do you, though. It feels like a running gag about like the one animation they like. There's like one portrait they made where he has a bagel, and now they're just gonna reference it in every plot. Line. That's his character. <laughs> RV has pulled out a great axe and a great cutting board, and already has her <laughs> arm on the literal chopping block. You're about to stop her when you hear a doorbell ring. Where? Wait, like, like the door to Christmas? <laughs> Pizza delivery. Oh! Oh, shit. That's you, Keith. Pizza delivery for... Is this a butcher's shop or something? Damn it, I'm lost again. Greetings, fellow organic life forms. Oh, coincidental. We are also lost. Where are you trying to go, friend stranger? Uh... Wolfram and Hart Law Firm? Not sure which tree I took a wrong turn at, but I'm definitely not in the right spot, huh? I think. Huh? Cal, a Robbie! Team meeting now! Let's do this Damien style! Okay, now that we've all discreetly huddled up away from the pizza girl, here's the plan. We need to convince her this is Wolfram and Hart, so she gives us the pizza. Here for it! Bold move! Hex likey, you've got moxie, kid. <laughs> Server error. We can't, friend Damien. Lying and stealing are wrong. You are doing both at once. That makes this wrong by a factor of two. Oh no. Wrong oh. squared. <laughs> calculus or calculus or calculus or. You don't understand. Remember that circle of life chart I drew up for you? Look here. It says clearly that Damien's are a natural predator of pizzas. It's all part of nature for Damien's to use their cunning and metalness to prey on any pizza they see. Ah, okay. I understand now that the circle of life is above the law. <laughs> what is your hunting strategy, friend Damien? Easy. We ask Keith what to do. Damien's and Keith's have a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> He hunts and I eat. So what's this gonna be? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prove to the pizza girl that this is a law firm by suing her in a very credible way. Find a wolf, a ram, and a heart in the woods. Glue the wolf and the ram together, put them in suits, and gl add glasses and fancy suitcases. And, and et voila, Wolfram and Heart Law Firm. <laughs> huh. Huh. Well, that sounds extremely creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is the worst thing I could do. So. Oh, it's, all right. Okay, so, like, I know this was an, my amazing idea, but are you guys sure we can actually sue her? The only times I've been to court, I was in the defendant's chair. Calculator 2.0. Mm -hmm. Worry not, my friend. I was friend Vera's aide in her questionably legal law firm last semester. <laughs> I have memorized the proper procedures for falsely accusing a defendant. Yeah, and I watch, like, a fuck ton of procedural law TV shows, so I've got all the lingo down. This'll be easy breezy. <laughs> Here, watch this. <clears throat> Ms. Pizza Delivery Girl, is it? We here at Wolfram and Hearts present you with a subpoena to bring your company, Pozo's Pizza, to a court of law. See you, court sucker. Yeah, get sued, noob. God, give me a break. I need to breathe for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like a game over, but for your life. Or something. Ah, uh, shit. You guys are suing Pozo's? This has never happened before. My thoughts and opinions do not reflect Coco's pizza. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> In the woods, specifically. 
It happens other places all the time, so, uh, see you in court, I guess. The date is set, and a few days later, you and your friends roll up to court, ready to chew gum and smack gavels. This is the second consecutive pizza storyline. <laughs> oh my god! Jesus Christ, it never Look ends. Okay. Costumes. Dude, this is only the first right. half an hour of a three hour thing. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> All rise. Ladies and gentle persons of the jury, we of the Wolfram and Hart legal team move to indict the defendants as guilty of. Objection! Objection! Uh, Just said it. Hold it! Don't. Ob oh, wow, this is a whole fucking Ace Attorney reference, isn't it? <laughs> it, that, Do you want me to take hold it? For now? Yeah. No, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. Hold it! Don't object to us, Damien. You're on our side. <sighs> but but the bailiff made me swear on a Bible that I would tell the truth. That's an affront to my culture. <laughs> ah, because you are a demon, correct? What a noob. No, because telling the truth is for nerds. Take that. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> uh, Your Honor. I can no longer represent my fellow lawyer in this matter. God, that really is just Edgeworth's costume. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> but you are not representing Damien, friend Hex. Your Honor, I would like to motion for an insanity plea for my team. Ugh, I can't carry this one. You foolish, like foolish fool. You're showing our ex inner experience. Your Honor, the entire legal team pleads ple 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 the fifth. This is a shit show. Luckily, previous lawsuits have already proved that Pozo's Pizza has more OSHA violations than a Mortal Kombat arena, so they were found guilty before he even got here. <laughs> the pizza parlor is sentenced to comp you with the pizza that was supposed to be delivered to Wolfram and Hart. Cool. Yay! You all eat it. It's kind of cold now, but that's okay, because it tastes like victory. You also gain two boldness and one fun. Let's do it by the book. I am That's already two consecutive fucking pizza storylines. Exhausted. And I have to do another scene. <laughs> we almost need to have uh, like four player games that are three player where all I do is run it. <laughs> just just so that there could be enough voice actors, but not the four hour game that you get from a short game. Mm -hmm. With four people. Alright. Uh, boldness. Boldness in the minority. While exploring the haunted manor, you find an enchanted skull who speaks in riddles. His voice makes your ears bleed. You decide to name him Sparky and give him your keychain as a fun pet. He tells you all sorts of cool things like, Beware the tides of Venus, and if you meet a guy named Lenny at Costco, don't give him $20. Ooh. Sparky also tells you exactly when and how you'll die. Apparently it's going to involve a lot of mozzarella sticks. You gain two boldness for getting that insight. You already knew RV was loaded with bravery, determination, and shuts and chutzpah. <laughs> but, but as the <laughs> as she roots through her bag, it's clear she's loaded with some pretty sick items as well. Unbelievable! Where are my battle axes plus one through plus two hundred all out oh why? Okay. Why are all my battle axes plus one through plus two hundred all out of order? You got I got bored while you were sleeping and arranged them by color. <laughs> the, the chaotic approach to libraries. <laughs> Aravi rolls her eyes and drops all the battle axes on the ground to be sorted later with by clicking the left stick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's that Alexandria's cursed emerald diadem I found in that one dungeon. And may I just say, I'm very cool about not being the only curse in your life. <laughs> Miss Mistra, how dare you litter on the hallowed grounds of Camp Spooky? Oh. oh, I'm not littering, Camp Director Miss Weaving. I was just looking through my bag for... You're telling me? That all of these items were in that one small bag? Likely story. And what is it with this bottle of booze? Oh, do you think that Miss Weaving and, and uh, Principal Giant Spider are divorced? Oh, I didn't think of that, but I'm <laughs> gonna say yes. <laughs> that's not booze, that's my therapist. 
then you need a second therapist to help you deal with the fact that you keep your first therapist trapped in a bottle. If that were true, which it obviously is not, and I can prove it, let's see exactly what kind of spirits are in here. If it's Miss Guy's toilet wine again, I swear. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh my <What>? god. <laughs> what the? Camp director, Miss Weaving raises an interesting point about keeping me in a bottle, RV. Mm -mm. Do you think you can feel the need? <laughs> Do you think you feel the need the to keep people physically tied to you because of your brother Sally's disappearance? Oh, they have a little notepad. They are the therapist. Yeah, that's the therapist. <laughs> oh, wow. There they are. So, you didn't sneak booze in. You snuck a pet into camp. That's uh -oh. even worse. I'm confiscating it immediately. I don't want to talk about my feelings. <laughs> Not a pet. She's my therapist. And I'll prove it by showing how calm and level-headed therapy has made me. Yeah. Oh, no. I've been working so hard at therapy, and I'm getting so good at therapy. <laughs> I appreciate the enthusiasm, but therapy isn't something you get good at. No, I'm slaying therapy. And I'm gonna prove it by, by, Bird, how am I gonna prove how good I am at therapy to Miss Weaving, so Miss Weaving gives Nora back? You've done dream and, you've done dirt, uh, blah, blah, blah. You've done dream interpretation, in, I can't say it, <laughs> interpretation <laughs> and therapy, right? Demonstrate analyzing the shit out of a dream. This may not be spooky high, but you can still ace a test. The ultimate test. The Rorschach test. Uh, shit. Uh, so either one of these sounds like creativity or smarts to me. Well. I don't know which one to pick. The top one seems like... Creativity or smarts, and the bottom one seems like... If I were to guess, creativity or smarts. So. <laughs> um, yeah, they're both interpreting a thing, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Fuck. Um, I'm more inclined to think a test is smarts and interpretation is creativity, even though they both technically are that. But <laughs> they use the words. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I'm interpreting it the same way, too. Surprise, oh, that's a fun. good point. <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh, let's do the bottom one, because I think that might be smarts. Yeah! Hey. Yeah! You all talked me into making the right decision. I was going to make the wow. wrong one. Wow, we're good influencers. <laughs> Listen to us forever yeah. now. Uh, no thanks. Yes. <laughs> oh, hell yeah! Rorschachs oh, are the tests of therapy, and tests like the final boss of school! What? <laughs> You know that amazing feeling you get when you clear an area and you get to see your percent completion and you know you've destroyed all your enemies and then you get to move on to the next thing? I hate that. Hmm. Why do you think you feel the need to measure everything in percentages and accomplishments? The real dungeon is a thing. It yourself. may be beneficial to consider that some journeys in life have inherent value just by going on them without focusing on some end goal. In other words, play Elden Ring instead of Ubisoft games. We are totally <laughs> winning our lane. <laughs> sure. Tell it to the letter grade system and game unlocks. Rorschach <laughs> time, baby! I got a triple S. <laughs> you don't need to be you don't need to be told twice. You immediately hold up the first picture. Huh? I got 102% in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> therapy speedrun. <laughs> hmm. This kind of looks like bird on uh, on some kind of bloom ride. At an amusement park? <laughs> Therapy any percent run? <laughs> <laughs> you nod thoughtfully and hold up the next picture. Hmm. This one gives me a lot of very spooky feelings to me. It looks like a sheet with two holes cut in it, being worn as a ghost disguised by a bird-shaped figure. Oh. Oh, yeah, we got to see. Oh. Your subconscious is all bird. <laughs> <laughs> and this one looks like bird releasing an eldritch deity from its totem. That one looks like bird taking a dead body to prom. She's so imaginative that all of these things look like the person holding them. <laughs> yeah, all these things are the endings of the previous game. <laughs> yeah. That one is very clearly bird with a shopping cart full of guacamole marbles and a penguin mask. Uh, Kinky. Hey, I did that. Yeah, it's even yours. <laughs> you tried to do that for like a month. And I did do that once, <clears throat> thanks to a mouse slip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was you divine intervention. I'm God. <laughs> yeah, clearly. 
You do realize that Bird is very clearly just holding up pictures of herself, right? Oh. Yeah. Oh. And am I describing them perfectly or what? Hey, listen. Aravi, surely you must understand that this isn't a legitimate Rorschach test. Oh, a critical test. Acing a Rorschach test consists of looking at pictures and accurately describing what you see. I'm doing that. Therefore, I crushed it. Huh? Right, right? Everyone tell me how good I did at that test and therefore therapy and therefore life, right? <laughs> you know oh, what, Mr. Mishra? I'm going to go ahead and restore possession of your bottled therapist and onto you. You clearly have some things to work through. Play of the oh. game! <laughs> yes! Thank you, Bird. You look great in all those Rorschachs, by the way. That compliment alone gives you two charm and one boldness. Who needs therapy when you can improve your personality with points? That's what I say! Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Everybody choose a movie. Or else. Uh, <laughs> which one did you say? Oh, I said or else. I didn't pick a movie. Oh. Okay. Um. Space Jam. <laughs> yeah. What are they called? Shit. Uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer stop-motion movie by... Ralph Bakshi. No. But... Oh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I can't remember the names. Chat, help. Um, we'll go with uh, Monty Python's uh, Holy Grail. Play was decided based on how on the likelihood that Lady Bird would survive in said movie's universe. <laughs> I already forgot all the choices. So there was Monty <laughs> Python, Space Jam, and what was your choice? The stop motion uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer movie, ah. which uh, you, that, it's not a great start because you're like at the North Pole, <laughs> <laughs> and also there's the snowman, and, they, so, and, I'm, and I'm guessing it's before his teeth are gone. <laughs> if you're in Space Jam, like I feel like your chances of surviving are really good, except. Like for the one scene where they're terrible, like when somebody say, like, slam you... dunks and like a bomb goes off or some shit. Yeah, are you in? Are you in the universe or are you playing Space Jam? <laughs> I I interpreted it as like I'm a character in Space Jam, so I'm like playing with the Looney Tunes against the monsters. You are so that is gonna be difficult That's to survive. Danger. Are you sure? <laughs> I used to play basketball as a kid. Yeah, but I mean. You've seen I don't... Space Jam, too, where it's like they roll each other over with steamrollers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but you can also just drink some water and gain superpowers. Okay, that's a good point. Everyone just immediately does heal all their wounds in Space Jam. Yeah, I'll like admit, nothing's I don't, there. I don't remember anything about Space Jam, so I'm just thinking of Flubber. <laughs> <laughs> the other cartoon That's movie. a different yeah, movie, but okay. movie. <laughs> uh -huh. So arguably you could say that Space Jam has like a 100% survival rate because no wounds are more permanent than like a minute. What was yours again? Uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail. Oh, that's not great. <laughs> no, it's pretty low down there. I'm pretty sure yeah. I'm third. Worse than the North Pole? I don't think anyone died explicitly in the Ralph Bakshi North Pole Times <laughs> movie. But a lot Rankin of people Bass. died. There we go. So here's the thing. It's Rankin you really Bass. Like, you really like bunnies. Yes. There is a bunny in Monty Python's Holy Grail that kills people. I was going to say, it does <laughs> attack people, though. Yeah, so you would but be... would be able to charm it? I don't know. I don't know. And you would try to find out. So you're... I'm third as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, I'm diving on this train. That didn't make any sense. Rankin Bass. That's what I said, Ralph Bakshi. <laughs> I'm not actually kidding. I couldn't remember what it was, but I remembered those letters. Okay, yeah. I need to, I seriously need a break after running three scenes. I'm gonna get some water. Oh my god. Hopefully nobody hopefully none of my characters come up. Oh my god. Uh they they def they have to. They can't know. They, they probably will. He, he's they're, already out. They're half the um, cast. Alright. I'll just make it work. What stats would you like? Um, what's in Camp Dome? That is Charm. It's the sports place again. Ah. 
I wonder if I should I try to increase charm or should I stick with something I'm already good at? Uh, I think the you have goal to play is to, to what you to... think Joy is gonna like. But I don't know yeah. what she's gonna like. None of exactly. us do. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> good luck, have fun. Um, I think it might be boldness and smarts she's because probably... she's always going on about trying to save the world. Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, let's. Boldness feels like such a demon stat, and there's two demons. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, the lake is fun. She might be the uh -oh. least fun character because she just sits around reading books and complaining. Okay, no, not that fun. Um. Gosh. How about the woods? That is smarts. Okay, yeah, let's, let's go to the woods. While hiking through the woods, you come across a bunch of delicious, edible mushrooms. Well, you think they're edible anyway. I mean, you you ate them. <laughs> On a completely unrelated note, you also meet an ancient, all-powerful god who's timelessly intelligent and also really into vaporwave for some reason. That's the entire, that's literally every character in all of, uh, of uh, Paradise Killer. That's the premise. <laughs> Gods are real, you're with them, everything's vaporwave. That's just a game. You gain two smarts from your dope conversation with the, va the vaporwave god. Everybody needs to play Paradise Killer, especially you, whoever the fuck I, I'm listening, is listening right now. Afterwards, you're hanging out with your number one summer crush, Joy. It's national, fondly reminisce upon your past day, so she's flipping through the pics on her phone with you. The hell yeah. Ooh, this was back from season three, right after we beat that mutant spider. Faith looks so cute in this one. And look at that awesome Fleetwood Mac t-shirt I'm wearing. No. That t-shirt was so cool. It was vintage from the 78 tour. Stevie Nicks blessed it herself. Oh my god, is it this one again? <laughs> we we failed it both night. possible ways sure. so far. We've never succeeded. Did I sacrifice this to the goddess or something? Hmm. <gasps> oh, wait! I remember exactly where I left it. <sighs> Joy makes a mysterious phone call. She starts asking about the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt, but the person on the other end of the line is obviously not being chill about it. Ugh. Listen, Axorax, I know things ended badly between us, but can you please just give me back my Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? I specifically remember leaving it in your evil lair. I know you know which t-shirt I'm talking about. I didn't leave multiple t-shirts in your lair. No, there is definitely no need to discuss it in person. Do not portal here. Suddenly a magical portal opens. An objectively <laughs> sexy centipede person emerges, and they are giving off palpably villainous vibes. Joy, baby, I've come to speak with you in person just like you wanted me to. You look as lovely as the day I wrapped you in my bug silk. Enough of this. No, Baxorax. I specifically said that I did not want to talk to you in person. You're doing that thing again where you gaslight me into spending time with you, which is bullshit. Ugh. Ladybird, meet my ex, Axorax. They're a magical evil sent to be a person I defeated back in season three. I know they look hot, but don't let your guard down. They mind controlled everyone in Philadelphia and tried to make all the citizens jump into a pit of centipede venom. Oh, you make me sound so evil, Joy. But that's all in the past now, gorgeous. We should focus on the present and this very important t-shirt debacle. Why don't we ditch this third wheel? You and I can go out for coffee and talk it over. Or perhaps we can enjoy a romantic dinner. Do any restaurants around here serve pre-chewed aphids? Ugh. Ugh. Axorax, if I go get one coffee with you, you promise to immediately hand over the shirt. Show me the shirt right now before I waste my time. Oh, yes. Uh, let me sh check inside of my carapace. Oops. Silly me. Looks like I forgot to bring the shirt. Guess we'll have to keep hanging out until my portal spell recharges. Typical. told you so many times that I'm not okay with us hanging out because we always end up getting back together. It's a toxic cycle. I really want that t-shirt. 
Axorax is stressing out your potential thick goth G GF. Unacceptable. <laughs> Get that Fleetwood Mac t-shirt for joy by any means necessary. Set up a black market exclusively for buying and selling Joy's belongings. You'll trade up for the t-shirt. Call the police and send out an Amber Alert for the t-shirt. Axorax can't hide from the power of a vigilant community. So we picked both of these and failed both times because they were both wrong stat in both games. So we... What? That's so strange. <laughs> well, it's because um... it was different stats each time. Because it was different flavors. Oh. Like, we've, we've, we have, it was our third time being at this point. <laughs> Will we finally succeed? The game is just shoving it in our faces until we finally get it yeah. right. It's like being taunted. Um... We've only played three games, <laughs> including this one. I think. I don't know. I think three games, yeah. Uh, and I don't know what the stats were again. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's let's try the amber alert. Uh, finally. An amber alert. Seems like it might be a waste of public emergency services. But it's better than watching Axorax drink coffee through his pro oh, through their proboscis. Let's go. You and Joy go to the police station and file a missing t-shirt report. You describe the t-shirt. Beloved, vintage, smells like heavy metal concerts and burning sage. The police officers are super concerned. Did you say this was a Fleetwood Mac shirt? And it was vintage? This is serious. We're assigning our best detective to the case. Yes, yes, it's me, Detective McBooty. We're here <laughs> to find that missing shirt, officers. Remember, the first 24 hours are the most crucial to keep this case from going cold. I've sent out alerts to all local cell phones. We'll be conducting interviews with t-shirt lovers in the area, and, communi and community search parties will begin immediately. <laughs> Wait. I appreciate the help, but you're misunderstanding. We already know who has the Fleetwood Mac shirt. It's with my ex, Axorax. A true detective never works off of assumptions. We will get your t-shirt back through the power of deduction and evidence, my dear Joy. Six hours later, Detective McBooty concludes that, yeah, Axorax definitely has the t-shirt. Duh. You there, bug person, Detective McBooty, FBI. F stop right there. Hand over the Fleetwood Mac shirt and we'll escort you to prison. Wait, are you implying that I'll be taken to prison for stealing a single t-shirt? My god, the criminal justice system is even worse than everyone say it says it is. Oh, well, you're going to prison because you mind-controlled Philadelphia and you keep dissolving humans in your bug venom. But... Shirt stealing is also a serious crime. Ugh, you know I can open magical portals, yes? Your human jail will not hold me, McBooty! <laughs> Tell that to the judge, Buggy. This has been joyful. <laughs> uh, I got my shirt back, and I also got to see my ex led away in handcuffs. This is officially a great day. And it's all thanks to you, Ladybird. God, Joy is See, so she's even more cute. psychotic than Aravi. <laughs> How? Aravi doesn't even have an axe to lead away in handcuffs. Yeah, she has. Uh, she just has fifty axes. <laughs> uh, who doesn't? Everyone. <laughs> oh my! You're just extrapolating your experience and putting it on everybody else. It's throw up. <laughs> you just turn the webcam slightly in your room, and it's just a wall of axes. <laughs> One for every monitor. <laughs> That's why it's so echoey in there. <laughs> God, <laughs> God, Joy is so fucking cute. She wears the t-shirt for the rest of the day. Turns out it really is blessed by Stevie Nicks. Stevie's blessing gives you three boldness. So many places to so go. So much boldness. You're so bold. Overwhelmingly bold. Um. Uh. Should I just leave my creativity in the poop hole? Let's see. I don't know, that's not very creative of you. <laughs> well, I'm not playing, I am, yeah, I was about to say that I'm not, I'm not playing as green, but that's, I got that backwards. I'm very smart. Um, yeah, you are. What if I was more Good fun? Job. Like, just even more fun. You decided to go relax in the lake for a bit. 
Camp Spooky gets pretty crazy, so it's nice to just float on the water and chill. Look at the fish! Look at the crying fish! <laughs> it's not happy! Oh no! Also shark. <laughs> There's a lot happening right now. You end up falling asleep and wake up to realize you floated halfway across the lake straight into a crab ravine? The crabs are just as confused as you are, but they invite you to rave with them, and their party is surprisingly popping. You gain plus one invite to the next crab rave and plus two fun. You spot Calculester sitting on the pier, contemplating a fishing pole. You ask him why he's not using it to, like, fish. Is this a nature the goggles. that I've heard so much about? I would like to, friend Key. After all, fishing is a classic lake experience. Mm. I am afraid, however, that I cannot overcome my hard-coded moral objections to the catching of fish. Even if I were to throw back the fish I caught, using a hook to snare them is a gross violation of their personal autonomy. Also, I have been led to believe that it hurts. Living creatures are able to justify this cruelty by their need for sustenance or their higher moral worth as creatures who have mastered tool use and organized crime. <laughs> but I am not certain that I, a cold and unfeeling machine, can claim greater moral worth than any creature of flesh and blood, no matter how small and slippery. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I am able to come up with a moral objection to practically every activity we engage in here at Monster Camp. Hiking contributes to soil erosion, which harms plants and degrades the natural environment. Friendship bracelets utilize symbolism appropriated from indigenous culture. And worst of all, the 20 plus students who are murdered every day in the camp dome are not composted. <laughs> oh dear, oh gosh, oh no. Is no activity at this camp completely wholesome? Is everything tainted? Oh, Calculester, there is no ethical consumption under being a disgusting flesh beast. Damn. Perhaps I should simply find a quiet corner to sit in while I turn myself off for the summer. <laughs> at least that would be ethically neutral. No. If Calculester turns himself off, how are you ever going to turn each other on? There's got to be some way of catching fish that is 100% cruelty-free. In fact, you know just the thing. You've got to make the fish come to you by... Catfishing them. <laughs> Offering them free <laughs> dental care. <laughs> what? What the fuck? Alright, uh, shit. Uh. I mean, catfishing is kind of bold, I guess. I don't know. It's shit. charm because you're deceiving people, maybe? No. What would dental care be, though? That's <laughs> what it says. Lisa needs braces. I don't. <laughs> These got hard. Yeah. Uh... Uh... It's not good. It's not good. No. Nope. Yeah. Ah. Using your intimate understanding of the horny mind, you whip up the perfect I know profile that movie. to attract. <laughs> 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 Eternal sunshine. A of the horny, horny mind. mind. <laughs> oh, we went in different directions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The intimate understanding of the horny mind. Yeah. Yes. That's starring Jim Carrey. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You whip up the perfect profile to attract some unsuspecting fish. I'm a young horn. <laughs> I just added it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a young female catfish who loves yoga, travel, and meeting new fish. I don't mind being a bottom feeder, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Ew. I, don't I know am still means. unsure as to the morality of this enterprise, Key. After all, is it not unethical to lie, even if you are only lying online? You remind him of the old adage, all is fair and love and war. Hmm. Oh, well, far be it for me to argue with the time-tested idiom. Proceed with your plan. You strike up a conversation with a promising-looking fish, Juicy Lake Daddy 32, Red Snapper. You share a really deep hmm. conversation, and it feels like you're actually connecting. It's <laughs> we're gonna get catfished. Uh, it's a shame you're just tricking him so he'll jump into Calculester's lap. 
putting your guilt aside, you arrange a meeting with, with Juicy Lake Daddy on the pier later that day. When you show up to the date a few hours later, out of the water comes jumping. An old boot. You're furious. That this book this boot looks nothing like its profile picture. Aren't you the one who said that all is fair in love and war? That's bullshit. Time tested adages only apply to you, not duplicitous boots. Natural selection is coming for you. We must apply moral standards universally or not at all, friend Key. I think you and this boot both have some soul searching to do. <laughs> so <Soul> aw. <laughs> Oh, I get it. <laughs> you don't know what's worse, Calculester being disappointed in you, or the fact that you got catfished by an old boot. You lose two fun and one charm. Can you, can you go one session without getting your ass kicked by this game? No. Okay. Especially this one that's harder. <laughs> this one's so much harder. I have no idea what they're talking about with half these, these choices. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Didn't our second game end with us all winning, though? That's true. Yeah, that, that one went well. That was one of the best nights we've ever had. Um, <laughs> we were young and unafraid. <laughs> <laughs> and we were ready to start. Uh, creativity. I have no idea where Robbie <laughs> got her, but for whatever reason, my strategy of leveling up everything seems to work. <laughs> Fun fact, that's the strat. <laughs> okay. I just know, I've been told that the... Uh, it's min maxing, so you're supposed to level all of your st all of your stats against RV. That's the opposite of min maxing. That's it's yeah, averaging. It's max. It's okay, whoever max told you that mini. was wrong. <laughs> I, I said the thing wrong. It's, it's fine. Oh. I, I I editorialized and I am mistaken. Oh okay. But I'm not I'm not a reporter, so. <laughs> 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 that day in Monster Scouts, you learned to identify different berries. You all search for berries and try to identify them. A blackberry, a blueberry. But Rachel, the deer person, finds a very weirdly shaped berry no one can identify. You all stare at it for hours. It's closer to abstract art than to a berry, somehow. It's a true think piece. It forces you to reflect on berry inequality. And although there are no easy answers to the questions it poses, you all gain two creativity from the experience. Afterwards, the you get 1% stuck. of berries of 90% of all the juice. <laughs> and only 12 berries are contributing to 90% of berry guests. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, you get stuck in another one of Coach's lectures about trees. Hello, my beloved scouts. And that's why you should never let a lend a tree your mobile phone, no matter what it tells you. Suddenly, RV and and Calculester come running out of the woods. They stop in front of you and coach, panting, oh. which is in interesting for a computer. <laughs> Kids, what's wrong? Why are you panting? Harabi Mishra, monster slayer. Because we just hunted down a wily, and surprisingly fast, hedgehog, and slaughtered it for meat. Hmm. Good survival skills, but why is Calculester panting? <laughs> Back to basics. <laughs> To provide moral support for my friend Aravi. And what about Hex? They don't have lungs either, do they? DJ Hex up in the pipes! Nah, I'm not panting. I was just beatboxing. It's my new thing. And I hate it! That's why we're here. We're here so you can help us figure out what to do with this dumb animal we killed. Arby drops the still warm hedgehog corpse on the ground. Aww. You can't help but notice the bright red sneakers it's wearing. Maybe those uh, are what made it so fast. You've made this yeah. old tiger proud. I am honored that you came to me, kids. Cooking the meat of the animals you kill is an essential skill in your wilderness toolkit. First, you'll have to... No, 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 no. We know how to cook meat. I'm an expert hunter and survivalist. <laughs> And I have access to YouTube. <laughs> no, we want to figure out how to jazz this dead hog up so it's something people will actually buy. <laughs> dead, dead hog? hog. For our food truck. We are planning to start a forest food truck, you see. We are thinking of calling it The Woods in Your Mouth. That <laughs> oh, doesn't spell anything. I was checking. <laughs> <laughs> 
but we are at a loss as to how to proceed, as none of us have any experience with fine dining. I, for example, cannot eat or enjoy food. I usually just stab random animals and hope they drop fully cooked ham hocks or legs of mutton. Eagles. And I subsist mainly on a diet of Aravi's angst and everything bagels. Take care and never stop I'm sorry, kids. This is beyond my expertise. I know about survival, not how to cuisine. After all, if it was enjoyable, it wouldn't be survival. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Hot cuisine isn't your area of expertise either, but you know what is? Coming up with bullshit ways to get people to give you money. You suggest... People don't pay for their product, they pay for the brand. Just put some parsley on it and give it an elegant French name. Add some ketchup. Ketchup makes everything taste pretty okay. Okay. What a uh, tepid well, compliment. The top one seems like creativity. And the bottom one seems like fun. Fun, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna go with the bottom one. Mm. What? Sounds like the top one was charm. I guess so. Hmm. It's a decent idea, but I'm not sold. I think it would be better if we used cats up. Uh. What? Are you insane? Ketchup is by far the superior condiment. All the tier lists say so. You and your tier lists. I've tried both, and catsup is where it's at. Ketchup. Catsup. Mm. Ketchup. Mm. Catsup times infinity. Error 404. Friends, I do not understand. Are not ketchup and catsup different names for the same condiment? Huh. No! Nope. No, times infinity! Ugh. Everyone knows ketchup is made with tomatoes. Uh. While catsup is made with tomatoes. Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you. I do not. Shut up! I said ketchup is made with toe nay toes. Oh my god, the oil and mash and stream it too. I called it. Nicely done, Keith. And catsup, which is obviously superior, is made with tomatoes. I need to restart. <laughs> Error. Friends are being utterly irrational. Shutting down until illogic has ceased. <laughs> If that's what he's waiting for, it looks like Cal is going to be turning back on for a very long time. RV and Hex continue to bicker, and you lose two fun and one charm. So we're doing good. No. <laughs> Everybody choose a food. Who's going to say it first? Uh... Tomatoes. <laughs> nice. Beef. Uh, on the floor. Uh, floor, floor, floor seasoned beef. Floor uh, beef. Ground beef. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for making a pun out of my disaster. <laughs> <laughs> you like walked around it so hard that it's like, I don't. Five? He doesn't. The number five? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did Ladybird say? Uh, cold, greasy pizza. <laughs> Bachelor food. All of these. <laughs> Play road is decided based on which food you would choose to have in monstrous quantities in a survival scenario. <laughs> Floor beef, cold pizza, or tomatoes. Well, there's tomatoes I mean, I in pizzas. Tomatoes. Well, pizza's already cooked. And it's gonna have like a decent amount of like vitamins and minerals. Tomatoes are edible without cooking them, and beef on the ground is probably not edible in any <laughs> Monstrous situation. Monstrous quantities of floor beef. <laughs> what a horrible sentence. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I take it. the L once again. Same. 
We've been the same turn order the entire game so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time for this now. It's like the, it's like the uh, the lunch tables from before, except there's also a moth person. And also, you can go sit alone, and maybe another camper will choose to sit with you. But that's one of the two of us, so that's a dangerous gamble. Um, I will go sit with Joy and Calculester. You head over to the campfire to roast the exotic bug shish kebab you're lovingly crafted when you see Joy and Calculester writing in a notebook. Hmm. We could put fire extinguishers under every log so responsible campers can stop reckless one. May I chime in? Or we can push the campfire out immediately to prevent the need for fire extinguishers at all. Hello, fellow organic life forms. Oh, hello, friend Lady Bird. Friend Joy and I were brainstorming ways to make the campfire a safer place for all of our friends. And frenemies. Of course, normally a campfire poses limited dangers. But since this is camp spooky. <laughs> Friend Velo came dangerously close to the campfire the other day, dragging several campers with him to get a perfect fire lit healthy. Uh Frank masters have been known to pop in now and then, and they definitely stole some fire in a jar last time. Who knows what they did with it? <laughs> I do. I do know what. It was not safe. <laughs> and of course, there's Damien being Damien. And friend Dahlia being friend Dahlia. Duty calls. So, with all that in mind, we need a way to get people to be safe around the fire. Or make the fire itself safer! <sighs> no, nothing less correct. Fires don't hurt monsters. Monsters hurt monsters. Aww. Well, that logic doesn't add up completely, and you suspect it's just Joy being a bit tipsy and not thinking things through. Time to find a better solution. You're right, Calculester. Let's seal off the fire with a firewall. Huh? <laughs> hey, Joy, let's design and implement a fire harassment seminar to teach our fellow campers to respect fire's personal space. Hmm. Yep. Probably want the bottom one since it's Joy's option. Yeah. Yeah, you know definitely. What you're doing, don't you? Oh, dang. That's actually super smart. And maybe they'll be able to translate those skills into their relationships to other monsters, too. I realize you are attempting to help. Judging by past behavior and learning curves, friend Joy, my calculations indicate a near zero chance of this. A girl can dream, fuck bless her. A girl can dream. I need Aww. to restart. True. I forget because I cannot dream. <laughs> I can only power down or go into sleep mode, but alas, this does not bring me dream. <laughs> Given our classmates' general lack of common sense, I think we should come up with some simple, clear guidelines. Our seminar subsections can include a module called Where to Touch a Fire. The answer is nowhere. We can also give helpful tips like fire burns and a fire cannot give consent, so please keep your genitalia away from it. Oh. Surely organic life forms must know that their much needed reproductive organs should not be placed near a substance so hazardous to them. No. He doesn't know Damien well enough. <laughs> 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 wow. Apparently, you haven't spent nearly enough time with Damien. But I think with these instructions, even our most reckless classmates should successfully learn the importance of respecting a fire's personal space. Let's save the world. Great idea, Ladybird. You're welcome in my personal space anytime. <laughs> By which I mean, you can sit next to me around the campfire. For now. Joy winks at you, and the feeling it gives you is warmer than the glow f the glow from any campfire. I might be too flammable for this. Genuine question, is Calculester a Game Grumps joke, or did they get the joke from Monster Prom? I don't know. They used to say, I like, friend Aaron all the fucking time. 
Yeah, I think um I I think it's a Game Grumps <laughs> joke. Because I, I, I think, I don't know. Yeah. It it's might have been something that, yeah, they added because of the Grumps. Because Aaron Hansen does, like, some of the voices, right? Yeah, right. He, vo he voices and uh, this, Scott. This came out after Doki Doki Literature Club? Uh, I don't know. Because he, he, was, he was saying friend and stuff in second term. And I don't know if second term was before or after Doki Doki. That's, like, hard I don't know. to parse. That's a strug. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I also don't know if they're just both taking it from somewhere else, because you can never tell. Because they also crib from everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, this, I'm like they, they, did the, they did the snowing in Mountain Fuji thing, so like, I don't, I, that, everything's on the table. I don't know what the fuck to yeah. think anymore. Oh, the friend. <laughs> Calculus. <hate> <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go, go, go gossip about myself or something. This is also a kernel character. Ah, uh, hello, Keith. Yes, sit wherever. Such an annoyance. I apologize. I'm in a bit of a mood today. Nothing seems to cheer me up. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Would a little gossip be enough to lift Moss's spirits? Well, perhaps, but only if it was really, really good gossip. Damn, really good gossip is a bit of a tall order, but hopefully you can rise to the challenge by lying about myself. <laughs> <laughs> homemade bologna poor life chose the most exquisite perfume or the souls of great pre-socratic philosophers <laughs> wow that's a pain <clears throat> that's a smart bold fun charm charm a serious case of the anime eyes <laughs> An uncomfortable degree of a degree of thirst, extra toned glutes, breath that's beyond bad. Oh, a serious case of the anime eyes. Oh fuck. Type in the most uncommon condiment or seasoning you like. Uh. Salt. Salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I don't like many condiments, but when I do, it's salt. <laughs> wow, that was an incredible gossip key. My mood is now so much happier. I can't wait to tell this to everyone whose spirits need uplifting. Thank you for everything. You spread your rumor like the predictable, gossipy weeb you are. <laughs> your, equally, <laughs> your equally predictable, gossipy friends spread the rumor even further. Hey, you! Oh my god, you're never going to believe what I just heard about Keith. Well... Have you ever noticed how he wakes up super early and disappears for hours before sunrise? I was just told the reason. Apparently Keith has a super eccentric morning routine. Unbelievable, he follows right? the weirdest lifestyle blog and starts a day strong by eating an entire bowl of full of the most exquisite perfume. The side effect of eating that kick-ass bowl is a serious case of the anime eyes. But you probably already <laughs> noticed that because it is quite apparent by interacting with Keith during the day. I know. But right? you never thought it was due to that unorthodox breakfast, did you? And that's not all. To kick off the day, Keith styles his hair by using pineapple mustard as holding gel. That's what gives Keith's hair that unique texture that such a that such a house stable for him. But it's a secret. <laughs> Learning some <laughs> should have said house ranch. Learning someone's morning routine really shows you who they truly are, huh? Yep. And what Keith will do for tom uh, tomorrow after waking up is probably gaining four charm thanks to your gossip skills. I know that's me. It's weird that I'm talking about myself in the third person. The time has come, <laughs> and so have I. Uh, for her, right. Talk to gamers. Gamers squared. First uh, Dahlia voice of the day. Later, you're craving a healthy dose of attention from your peers when you spot Dahlia oh, I know that by deal. the campfire. So, so once I ripped his biceps off, he pretty much knew I'd won. But he still agreed when I asked him to get in a quick makeout before I delivered the mortal blow. Snow, awesome. Here for it. Oh. My. God. Dahlia, you boss blue babe. You are so bad. 
Looks like Dahlia, Arvi, and Hex are conducting one of their classic girl talk sessions. Your butt in as usual. Oh, you, you butt in as usual. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can join our girl talk if you want, Bird, but you better be conversing at the top of your game. Today, we're discussing the ultimate girl talk subject, crushes. <laughs> Robbie, you drew the short bone in the rabbit spine. You're first. Who's your secret crush? The rules of girl talk dictate that you have to tell us, or at least give us hints. Whoa. Is Arby about to admit that she has an emotion? And that emotion is romantic in nature? And she feels that towards another person and not a battle axe. Mm. Come on, you guys. Do we really have to say it? Uh, well, if I have to admit it, I've always had a secret crush on that centaur mini-boss that lives right outside the woods. Uh. Aravi, are you fucking serious? Is that why we keep taking those patrol shifts on the forest perimeter? Those were at 3 a.m., Aravi! Uh. Whatever, I know it's kind of embarrassing, but he's pretty buff and I want to hear all the muscle squelching sounds when I crush him. <laughs> um, and what? And that's why they're called crushes. Like melon okay, between I admit thigh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I admitted mine. Now I have to say yours, Dahlia. So who's, who's your secret crush? Uh... Hmm, this is kind of tough because I usually just tell someone directly when I'm crushing on them. I don't really bother keeping my crushes a secret. <laughs> but I guess my current number one crush is Timothée Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the stupidest way I could have said that. Said Same that. <laughs> Shut up, your <laughs> ass. <or whatever. laughs> you can't turn it off anymore. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I can't stop fascinating about crushing him. Just one of my boots could crush all of his bones. I misread that word at first. <clears throat> anyway, we're meant to be. Dear God. I misread it as boobs, by the way. Just <laughs> throwing that out there. I by, called it. By crushes, <laughs> Dahlia and Arvi are literally mean people they want to crush. <clears throat> Every time I get a new crush, I totally get this intense feeling of butterflies in my stomach. It lasts right up until I stomp the last drop of blood out. Hee <laughs> hee! Glad you appreciated that. <laughs> huh, I get that too. And I get kind of jealous. I don't like anyone else to crush my victims. What about you, bird? Any crushes we should know about? Dahlia and Arvi just give you the perfect opportunity to hint that you're interested in one of them. Flex your girl talk skills and crush this convo. If I'm crushing on someone, I go all in. I gear up with every weapon and toy that I can think of in the... I'm kinky that way. Hmm. Think is, I'm more of a crushy than a crusher. My middle name is Step On Me. <laughs> <laughs> Bird Step On Me Catcher. Hell yeah. That'd be, no, don't pick that one. Don't pick that one. It's obviously the top one because of gear and weapons yeah. and shit, so... Whoa, bird! I didn't realize that you were so well prepared for adventure. Aravi, are you blushing right now? Or is that just the side effect of that poison worm potion you drank earlier? What kind of equipment are you talking about? And oh, what I am see you keeping your quick draw. Anything uh really, really dangerous? You start by describing all the raw materials in your inventory, including your gold and iridium ores. Then you slowly talk her through your ranged weapons. What? Wow. When did you get so much inventory space? You could fit a merchant town in your pockets, bird. Finally, you show RV the first item in your quick draw. Your magic wow. wand. Wow. Its core is made of mistletoe and ancient whale grease. <laughs> it's got a plus oh. six buff to your spellcasting. And best wow. of all, it's made of body safe silicone. <laughs> Dear gods, that sounds like some fucking top-notch equipment bird. It's also upgraded. 
Yeah! Sounds like you've got the gear worthy of a warrior. Hey, do you find that your equipment ever comes in handy for boning? Happens to me all the time. Uh. What? Dahlia? Come on, it's not like any of us were thinking about the lewd uses for that wand. Like, for example, how good it would feel if you used it with some climbing rope. Uh. <laughs> uh. Anyway, we should change the subject. Y'all finish up the girl talk by debating which of Timothy Calamite's bones you would, would be the most fun to crush. Dahlia takes uh. off afterwards, but RV grabs you by the sleeve. Bird, I was kind of impressed with some of that inventory stuff you were talking about back there. Guess you're not a, as bad as that girl talk as I thought you were. Do you want to be my support? <laughs> 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 Maybe we could battle sometime and to see who crushes who. Hell yeah. Arvi is probably going to crush all the cartilage in your face, but you're yes. going to crush her heart. With the power of summer romance. I have no idea how to pronounce that guy's name. All I, I've only seen it in text without the context of who he is. <laughs> well, you don't pronounce it as Timothée Chalamet. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Were either of us right? I thought you did. It's, Tim <laughs> it's Timothy Chalamet. But then why is why does it have that French accent? Because he's French. But then why is it <laughs> Timothée? Because we're Americans. But he's French. Yes. So it should be Timothy Chalamet, but like, why is I? I don't get it. Well, Timothy Chalamet. There you go.